Hello, I'm George Middleton. Get ready for a great show. Black space is a place for us. Real people with real issues. Discussing real topics. Black space. A safe space for our community. Hello, I'm George Middleton. Your host this evening for this podcast episode of Black Space Live. Today, we have two very special and important guests who are going to share with us their cutting edge concept combining digital art and precious metals with physical assets. And their names are Patrick Glover and Carlos Dixon. But before we get to those, to these uh, two enterprising young men, I would like to take this time to briefly encourage you to like, subscribe, and share this podcast. In other words, don't be selfish with this content. Share the love. So let's take a moment and introduce our panelists today. And actually, I'm going to have them introduce themselves. I'm really excited to get to learn about these brothers just uh, on the uh, behind, before we even started the show. Uh, I was feeling the energy from my brother, from one of the brothers already. He was going deep and he was taking me in deep waters. I'm like, oh man, this is, this is going to be a good interview. This is going to be a good show. So let's open it up. Let's begin with uh, Mr. Patrick Glover. And then he'll he'll pass it on to pass it off to Mr. Carlos. Go ahead, Patrick. Take it away. Hey, good evening, Mr. Miller. How you doing today? Good to see you. I'm doing great, man. All right. Yeah, man. A little bit about myself. My background. I graduated from the illustrious university here in Boca Raton, Florida. I'm a native of Delray Beach, Florida. All my life. I've traveled around the country uh, in a lot of places. And just recent, I've authored a couple books. My last two books were about cryptocurrency, uh, touching with the physical art and the digital space and merging them together. And for a while, I, I pondered the thoughts about what if one day we had a platform that we could actually associate digital art or digital coins and they'd be associated with the physical, you know, precious metal and physical art. And then one day, I met a great painter named John Lozier. He designed some great artifacts. And now those artifacts that we have uh, with the great partnership and merger with the brain genius, Mr. Carlos Dixon, we've been able to create limited transactions via MetaMask platforms, via OpenSea, and commingle things with precious metal and physical art and mint them, list them, and market them. And now we're on the road to an upper bound success. The market is down. I believe that we're probably five to 10 years ahead of the market, maybe a little bit more or less seven years ahead of the market. What we're doing and the foundations we, we're laying in the market, nobody has a, a brain arrow in the direction of associating the digital space NFTs with the physical space of art in the physical or the physical space of precious metal in the physical and and, and, and merge them and partner them with the understanding of associating them with the physical and digital uh, precious metal and NFTs. Uh, Amazing. Our product, yeah, our products products are great. Our NFTs are one of a kind. All right, don't don't go into that yet because we're gonna we want to go back because that you're getting ready to. And one of my questions to ask about that, okay. but I can tell right there. You, I mean, you're you're. You're not waiting for anybody. You're taking off and you're leading the charge on this thing. This is really exciting. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well, welcome, brother. We're glad, glad to have you. I'm really excited, man. Thank you. Uh, brother Carlos. 
Um, <laughs> well, well, uh, thanks for having me on your show, Mr. Middleton. You also know, yes, yes, it's sir. actually the first, very first time that I even learned of the program. So now I have to subscribe to the channel. You know what I'm saying on YouTube simply because you know you know it's always good to be able to network right with on. other brothers you know right so on. we can create this uplift uh, continue to create this uplifting uh, atmosphere that we supposed to have but anyway um so my name's carlos dixon like he stated at the beginning i'm a uh, native of tampa florida um so you know I, that's why i was uh raised actually you know born in mississippi that's where my family actually from but um you know raised in tampa uh went to uh well graduated from Troy State University in 2002, um, got a master's degree from Grand Canyon University in uh, educational leadership. Uh, you know, in both of those, uh, well, actually, um, well, one of the master's degree is obsolete at this point in time, although it does help to put it on a resume. You know, it's submitted to people, somebody, oh, he, he's, he understands at least how to learn, uh, at least is capable of learning, should I say. But anyhow, uh, so that's just a little bit of my educational background. Uh, right now, I'm a techie. I'm in the tech field. That's part of what uh, Glow was talking about is a brain, the genius. <laughs> I'm no genius. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to, I don't like to have things. I like to figure stuff out. You know what I mean? I'm just not going to let stuff just right. stop. Right. So I keep going until I figure it out. But anyway, um, so I took that same type of mind frame and I put that now. So what I do in addition to being a techie, I'm a network engineer um, in addition to that and security. I do that. That's my path. That's my track. Security, cybersecurity down in that field. It's a lot. Uh, Technology is changing day to day. So you got to keep up with that stuff. So, um, you know, that's pretty much what without going into you know detail about my career path. That's what I do on a day to day basis. In addition to my crypto thing so my channel on youtube is learn crypto tv as y'all can see right here you know learn crypto yes sir yeah that's my channel um you can check me out i basically educate our people about the world of cryptocurrency because and i'm coming i'm 42 years old so i'm coming from an angle that i wasn't raised in an atmosphere right. that taught right. financial literacy right all of the right. stuff that i have gained knowledge on at this point in time yeah. I took the initiative to learn on my own. So now, because I understand the deficiency even more so now than mm. in the past mm. about our people, right. I decided to create my channel to help that. Right. So Glover and I, we met through our uh, fraternity. Okay, hold, 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 right there, right there. Because okay. you can go, boy, you and Glover, you, you know, I could just, you know what I should do is just give you all the mic. And I'm gonna go in the back room and just watch with everybody else, cause y'all, y'all, it's like y'all wrote, wrote my script for me, man. Y'all go right there. <laughs> y'all right there, man. So hey, but you know, here's one thing about the genius thing. Here's one thing that I've seen a particular behavior pattern that I've noticed in all geniuses. They never admit that they're a genius. <laughs> you're right you know what i mean i'm no genius i'm no genius i'm no genius i'm see the guy you need to be scared of is the one that says oh i'm a genius <laughs> yeah. uh, now you suspect yeah. you know too much <laughs> yeah yeah stay so away from yeah yeah so stay away from that cat but the cat that yeah. says oh no man I, I don't know nothing man that's that's the true sign of intelligence man yeah yes sir so hey, welcome, Carlos. Thank you very much, man. Yes, sir. I'm I'm really excited to 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 get to learn from you too. Uh, I'm you know we're we're not in the same proximity uh, of space, but I'm feeling energy from the both of you, man. That you know is really uh, appreciative. So I'm, well, I'm I feel it. I feel it too from you because you got that a good old smooth radio voice, man. That's the main yeah. reason why I'm gonna subscribe to your channel because you're gonna be easy to listen to. Well, I'm finna, I'm finna subscribe to you too. But see, I was giving shout out to Patrick because Patrick got the love on that voice now. <laughs> Patrick got the love on that voice. <laughs> and I talk to Patrick all the time. <laughs> so anyway, so let, let's get to uh, the, the first piece. Uh, you, you know, I was telling Patrick uh, before we started that everybody loves a good story. And just talking to Patrick, you know, the brother by himself got a story. 
So I know both of you together have probably got some really interesting experiences. So let's just take a few minutes, let every let the viewers and listeners, watchers, just really get to connect with you two, because you two guys are very unique in this field, as you started to talk about, Carlos. Right. So um, tell us how how you two met and what drove your passion for this project that you've created. Okay, so we have a mutual friend in the fraternity that we are in, the greatest fraternity in the world, um, Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated, Manhood Scholarship, Perseverance Uplift. So we have a mutual, well, he actually has a family member that's a mutual friend for me, you know, that brought us in contact because he saw our similar mindsets and how we, and how we function on a day to day basis, especially when dealing with certain projects with passion. So he thought that it would be a good idea to bring us together, you know, because he saw what Patrick was working on. And at that particular moment in time, even probably still today, I'm the only brother that has uh, extensive knowledge in this crypto thing, especially when NFTs were really, really hot when everybody was talking about the bored apes and all of these pictures where everybody was saying you could screenshot it and I got an NFT and all. They're not really understanding how everything works. So basically, uh, Patrick and I, when we were linked together, he started throwing all of these ideas at me and I'm like, have to be Buster Posey over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, like slow down, bro. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, I, I, I saw where he was going, but he didn't understand the technical part of it. You see what I'm saying? Because everything right. with crypto has a technical. So once we started, we basically became brothers in a sense, you know, because just so you guys know, um, family, I'm in Columbia like not Columbia, South Carolina. I'm talking about like Columbia's. Yeah. So right. our company is international. Okay. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to slide yes, that in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, Lion Order Gold LLC is international. So oh, yes. right. Um, All we, right. We are, and I'm located in 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 Columbia, um, between Bogota and a couple other cities. Wow. So um, that's how, wow. and, and you know, and we do everything remote. Pretty much, you know, because that's the way the world is. It's the same way we have in this meeting right here, virtual meeting, metaverse, yes. all yes. of these things. So this is all of the stuff. Um, and the reason why I'm making these uh, uh, emphasis is because this is all the stuff that Pat was coming at me with. Even though I, I said, OK, I got you, bro. I got you. OK, look, OK, let's slow it down. We got yeah, he had that vision here. Yeah, he can right. see it. He, he can, can see it. it. He can see it. Other yeah. than what I was looking at. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But wow. it, was, it was, I guess, for me to be able to slow him down. So take, we take can the have steps. it done and take the right take steps the right to steps. get it done properly. You see yes. what I'm saying? Because yes. we don't just want to throw nothing out there on the people like that. Right, anyway, right. Um, longer the short of it is, is uh, that's how we ended up connecting through the mutual frat brother family. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, and once we started our conversations, as you indicated before earlier, that we both can go. You yes. See how that, and you yes. see how that went. So oh, yeah. You know, yeah. from my point, that's how we, you know, met and was able to establish what we have today. All right. All right, Patrick, fill in where he missed. Fill in the blanks on that. Man, man listen, I don't have to say much. I mean, he, he took it again. He took it to the next level because I didn't understand the intricate technical parts that went to a lot of this stuff. Hmm. But he understood the intricate technical parts and he was able to say, hey, listen, just calm down, slow down for a little bit, tone it down. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to take it. And actually, we're ahead of time. We're scratching the surface mm -hmm. to a machine that we're ahead of that mm -hmm. people haven't even begun to understand and implement from this mm -hmm. angle. Mm -hmm. They're just used to implementing digital and not associating the digital with the physical. And that's why I feel the market, since we're at a world market from a U.S. standpoint, mm -hmm. that's why the market is in such a disarray, because a lot of things weren't associated with the physical. Hold up, Paul. Paul, 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 Glover. Let me um, let me um, get get it real quick so they can understand what 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 pat is telling you guys or the audience is is that our company lion order gold the digital and the physical association is for precious metals there's only one other project in the crypto space and it's not even considered an nft that is linked to a precious metal gold that's pax gold that's that project pax gold but it's not linked to nfts these are actual what we, what we have here is an actual precious metal in what is it 2.2 troy ounce 
silver and gold actually but we took that we have on open c the digitized component of this physical precious metal which okay. in turn is art at the end of the day okay. so what the the price because a lot of people want to know the price the price action will be driven by the people the people who invest into the project that has a belief in they have something tangible that they can hold that's actually a value and just for the and this is where my mind because my mind go a whole lot of places but exactly in this line in this lane for the precious metal piece family what if one day you have to come to a bar system and there's no more fiat cash and there's nothing else for you to be able to you guys know what a bar system is i have something you need you have something i need let's swap in in the in the uh, i don't know if your audience knows anything about the uh bible but in the bible they had something called shekels okay these shekels were 10 ounce pieces of silver that's what they use as a monetary system during that time frame what if one day we are in that situation and now you have a lion order gold nft physically that was uh minted on the blockchain that gives you you know your digitized uh what do you call it um what, what do you call those documents when you go get your uh rings at the uh, jeweler certified oh yeah yeah <clears throat> certificate documents uh, yeah that's certification certified uh, gia certs stuff like that's that that's really that's really what that is on mm -hmm. the blockchain a public open ledger okay I mean, that's what people mention it on the blockchain so i just wanted to clear that all right. So, you know, so, so let's, people can understand directly what Pat was saying about what makes us different from everybody else. All right. So let's get into this. Let's let, let's do a. A. NFT 101 course. Let's start from and just build up the steps so that I know a lot. Of, we, we do have a sophisticated audience and, that, and many of them are already where you are. But just to make sure that we're including everybody, let's just come from the step one and bring it on up. First of all, yes. So first of all, first you're gonna buy our book on Amazon. Okay, okay, okay. Let's start. What's the title of the book? Carlos, um, how, it's how to it's how to buy and sell NFTs. Got you. Okay. By Carlos crypto, Dixon, crypto, crypto cream. Brother. Yeah, it'll say Carlos Dixon, Patrick Brother. It's two, it's two books out there, but this one in particular is how to buy and sell NFTs. How to buy and sell NFTs. Yeah, crypto. Yeah, crypto kings. How crypto to buy. King. Yeah, how to okay. buy and sell NFTs. Does anybody have that book available to just flash on the screen? Um, if you do, if you don't, if you don't, don't don't, don't worry. But we'll yeah, make sure, we'll make sure that we'll put that in the comment section. Uh, we want to support you, brothers, and make sure that that gets out. Um, so, uh, yeah, we don't want to give. You can't teach this thing inside of less than forty-five minutes, anyway. No. Let's just give some basic, uh, basic explanations. Let's start with NFT. What is an NFT, and uh, how did it even come into existence? What is that? Okay, NFT is a non-fungible token. That's what NFT stands for: non-fungible token. Carlos, what is a non-fungible token? Well, a non-fungible token or NFT is, for an example, I'll break it down to you this way. All right. So you go to a sport. Everybody has been to a sporting event or a concert of some sort where you had to purchase a ticket. OK, so a fungible item is going to be a dollar. I have a dollar. We can swap that dollar. We have the same note in value, size, color whatever it's the same so that's fungible non-fungible that concert ticket or the sporting events ticket that is going to be different because no one seat one row one section is the same within that stadium so those are non-fungible because they are not replicated gotcha. you understand gotcha. that's the simplest form that i can break it down for people to understand what is a nft it's the simplest form so on the blockchain okay you have mm -hmm. nfts 
that are minted or authenticated. Well, before you do it, before you do that, what is a blockchain? A blockchain <clears throat> is a public ledger. So Matt, everybody does taxes. Okay. Everybody has to do taxes. So if you do them yourself, or if you take them to a tax preparer, or you have an actual accountant that does quarterly filings for you. All right. That's a basically a public ledger. Your those tax accountings. Well, the blockchain is a digitized public ledger. Digitized. And it's and it's open for everyone to see. So it's transparent. Simple. I'm everything, all the questions you ask me, I'm gonna give them to you in the simplest form. I love it. I love it. Because this is the it. best way for people yes. to be able to understand right. the world of crypto. You know what I'm saying? So because right. it could get very, very technical, but the best way is to understand simple is always simplicity. simple is always best. Right. So yeah, that's the blockchain. So now you have this open public ledger, all right, that's authenticating you know transactions on on the ledger. On the blockchain mm -hmm. the nft that's non-fungible meaning you know not duplicated that's in if it's a one for one because you have some items you know that are duplicated but they have a specific serial number or something like that you know uh -huh. there's a couple projects out there that you know does that you know ecomi being one of them but anyway not to go down that route anyhow so once this authentication takes place on the blockchain via the in it uh, and now you have a uh an established document digital document for in our case lion or the goal a physical asset that can be one of one or one of however many you create that's simply how it, that's a simple explanation of NFTs, how they work, and how you authenticate them on the blo public blockchain. Now, what is a physical asset? Physical asset could be, for an example, that painting mm -hmm. that you have of those three guys singing back there. I don't know who that is. I can't quite make it out. That's the Rat Pack, brother. Okay, you, okay, you're so, very observant. Yeah, that's uh, oh, yeah, Sammy, Dean Martin, and Frank. Okay, so now if that if that photo was a piece that i'm sure that somebody could mint that on the blockchain and make it you know a digitized piece but you would still have to have the digital photo of that as well so somebody would have to take that photo digitize it mint it on the blockchain and then now you have a authenticated photo of the rat pack with that physical piece that you have hanging on your wall as well so yeah. if you wanted to sell it right, right. or somebody wanted to come in there and buy it from you hey man i want that rat pack how much you want for it oh, i'll give you seven ETH. i mean i'll take seven ETH for it ethereum that is you know because i'm talking in the future because that's what it's going to be but anyway i'll give you seven ethereum for that okay seven ethereum we'll move it through this wallet address and go over here like that you give him the uh piece um then you could go if you was on Rarible or OpenSea, change the owner of the document, I'm, uh, uh, change the owner's name on the digitized document, and then now the transfer is done. They have their uh, physical piece and digital authentication, and that's the sale of the NFT. So it's simple. It's, it's really as simple as that. Ethereum. Uh, how do you spell that? E T H E R U M. Okay that is can you can you explain can you explain or give us a a, a comp a, the the concept of ethereum okay ethereum is also a blockchain it's a infrastructural project meaning that um it's a it's a foundation for a lot of the uh most of the cryptos that has been built um so far as a project it's it's a smart contract platform as well smart contracts basically for an example you sign you sign a contract to buy a house you know what i'm saying uh whatever every you sign contracts to buy cars or whatever and well here in the very near future that's going to be done on the blockchain via smart contracts on a platform such as ethereum what the uh what they try uh, ethereum right now is the largest and um, most used blockchain it has uh transaction speeds or tps of eighty thousand. um uh no 
is it eighty thousand? No, it's less than that. Some it's it's in the thousands. God, I don't want to lie and misquote anything per second on doing transactions at one time. Excuse me. So, and also Ethereum is a. Uh, let me see. I want to word this. So this is this is a um, a a qualitative a quantitative system. This Ethereum is not some um, ethereal concept. This it's software. Is, uh, it's it's software. That's what I want to say. It's, it's software. software. Okay. All right. It's software. So a lot of people miss don't understand that crypto is not solely transaction or transactional. It's not that. You have projects like Deeper uh, Deeper Network, Helium Network. Uh, you know, you have VeChain, you have uh, Polygon, you have um, Audius, you have Theta, you have um, uh, Shucks, uh, Quant, um, XLM, XRP, Cardano. All of these projects right here are software. Wow. Wow. And in VeChain's case, it's the only project that's going to become a solution for the current supply chain problem that we have in the United States. It authenticates from point A, square one, all the way to your front door, pretty much, or whatever, or wherever the product is going, or whatever transaction is taking place in, uh, say, a hospital or, you know, in a legal setting or whatever the case may be um, that involves a supply chain. V chain is the project that's going to be able to solve the problem for that real world in the in the digitized sense. So, but anyway, um, this my point is is that there are over twenty one thousand crypto projects. Not all of them are going to be around, especially once the regulation kick in. You know, they all disappear. Well, most of them are going to disappear because they don't have any utilitarian value. You know, so. Uh, you want to look at those projects that's going to be inside of sectors that you know the world needs such as real estate real estate sector they have a real estate sector in crypto it's not going anywhere so you know real estate is going to be an infrastructure as i was just stating all the software projects artificial intelligence internet of things um you know you have uh you know some metaverse projects because they didn't build a metaverse for no reason okay these people are not just building this stuff for absolutely no reason. And, uh, you know, I believe in the Bible. I don't know what everybody else believes in, um, but that's what I subscribed to back in 2000. I started, you know, you remember the Y2K thing? Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I was 20. I was 20 years old. And so uh, the way that I was raised, you know, I have uh, somewhat of a uh, spiritual. Well, I ain't going to say no somewhat. I have a spiritual background and balance to mm -hmm. so, uh, part of my views in life. So uh, I always lead with that. So what I know from what I've studied over time, that this digitized system is going to come into place. It ain't nobody's going to stop it. You know, it's going to go all the way through and do what it's supposed to do. That lines up scripturally with what was prophesied to come. And that's just what I believe. So for me, Looking at this crypto thing, I might as well just jump out in front of it. It's almost like walking all the way to the end of the ledge and stopping before jumping off. You know what I'm saying? Well, know. I can tell. I can tell in your voice, you are thoroughly, thoroughly committed. Let me uh, on a, maybe a sidetrack. This may or may not be related, but I would love to get your uh, expert uh, engineering perspective on the recent crypto scandal with your your guy sam bankman freed sbf yes so, so basically, tell, tell me all right yeah. so from what i've researched and learned about this guy was very connected because if you if people don't know he had uh connections in the democratic party he was uh said to have been you know given large donations to the democratic party during this last uh, election cycle. And um, a lot of that is- no, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but what I heard recently was that they made a point to donate to both parties equally. Is that not true? That's not true. Uh, he, because okay. he's because he's connected, He's he, he got some bloodline somewhere. I, I don't want to say- the wrong, On the Democratic yeah, side? On the Democratic side, he has bloodline somewhere. Okay. I'm talking about real like family. 
So, you know, and that's how that's why he's not locked up right now. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if that had been somebody, hey, one of been in jail, oh, like, yeah, he been in there already. Come on now, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> been in there already. <laughs> so he's running around in the Bahamas doing interviews, lying and can't even get, yeah. Come on, man. All right. This stuff that's even Edu- coming out educators. of your mouth. All right. Educators, so, educators Carlos. So SBF is, is this guy who um, basically had two companies. FTX that grew to prominence. You saw FTX on the uh, the Miami Stadium. Um, you saw that. So you know, right. uh, that was a right. large deal. You know, much like crypto, crypto.com out there in LA. But anyway, um, he is uh, he's under forty years old. I believe he's in his early thirties, to be honest with you. Um, so basically, you have a, a young kid running a uh, a large corporation that's making billions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's was thought to be making billions of dollars because uh the longer the short of it is is basically what he was doing was uh this company called alameda research which was the the little sister company of ftx but this was also a hedge fund like i, I don't know if you guys the audience have you ever seen the wolf of wall street yes. um, that movie where he where he that company where he was taking those phone calls and all of that stuff and putting in fake that's kind of sort of what Sam Bankman Free or SBF was doing with Alameda Research. So the people he would get investors to invest into FTX on a larger scale. And then you would have the retail investors invest in their, you know, hundreds, uh, thousands, or maybe thousands, a few thousand dollars on FTX, the token. But what SBF was doing was taking that money, the corporation's money and the customer's money, and was going over to Alameda Research and placing trade bets that's what people call it you know what i'm saying they're not he was he was making trades you know on certain crypto projects that he thought was going to make the company more money and then he would just re- put, put the money back to way but see crypto went the other direction on him. and that's why everything disappeared wow and that's how it all happened. That's why that's why everybody's looking at this crypto thing right now. And it was an unregulated company. They right. didn't keep they didn't keep good financial records. They didn't have a large staff. They was operating with less than 15 people. As the, the record keeping, the record keeping alone has to be overwhelming at best. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know, because when you have Binance, Binance was going to buy it up at the beginning. But Binance within 24 hours, it wasn't even 24 hours and they backed out of it. They looked at the books and said no. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And Binance is the largest crypto exchange on the planet. So mm. uh when that happened, and then see, and then the other thing is all of the fallout, the crypto how it affect these other exchanges who were tied in, who had money invested in them. Right. Um, that I learned that now Gemini, because I have a Gemini exchange account that's mm. based in it, they were tied through Genesis. And Genesis was tied to Alameda. Wow. So it, the trickle down effect, you know what I'm saying? Good thing crypto.com is not affiliated with them, no kind of way, <laughs> or mm-hmm. Coinbase, or, you know, none of the other exchanges. Matter of fact, you had uh, another crypto bank that just said, I'm leaving America, I'm leaving the country, the United States, because they were, are still slouch on regulation. Nexo, NEXO, um, they left. You know what I'm saying? They phasing out American customers. You got a lot of exchanges doing that. You had gate.io, they did it back in April phased out customers because of the regulation or regulatory issues that still surrounds the United States. So, you know, it's a, I have to say, man, I'm thoroughly impressed with you, man, right now, because you, or you, you're not just attuned to your own project, but you're aware of the environment of what else is going on around you, dog. I mean, it's like you like you're on the pulse of everything that's happening within this field, man. If you're going to put your money in something, then you better know what you, you better know what you're putting it in. You know, wow. yeah. see the thing with the thing with me and Patrick, you know, that just I that just was kind of, you know, it was supposed to happen. You know, what yeah. I mean? Shoot, right. you know, the not the, the technical knowledge that I have and all of the man, you you Patrick got a lot of drive, man, and ambition. You know what I mean? I yeah. I, I haven't met a brother like him with that type wow. of ambition and drive. Wow. I haven't, wow. I just simply haven't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying it's like he don't know how to stop. You know what I'm saying? But um, but that's a good and a bad thing for me and us right now is good. So, yeah, you know, because yeah. and then at this particular moment, if we keep when we as we keep chugging along because we're in a bear market situation right now, 
um, we are basically hit the marketing where his strength is. Mm-hmm. That's where we are right now. And we just okay. have to continue to produce that physical component. So when the market comes back in 2025, because that's when the bull market will come back, mm-hmm. then we'll be ready to go with our crypto investments as well as these NFTs. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. the, whole goal, the whole goal is to be able to retire our families and help you retire yours too. Right. You awesome. know what I'm saying? By offering you something <clears throat> tangible. So speaking of Patrick, he ha- he had an emergency all of a sudden that he had to attend to he may be able to get back on i'm not sure yet but we're getting close to the time where we want to start winding it down you you've given us so much we're going to have to have you guys back because this uh you know this is amazing i mean you're just opening up you're opening definitely me opening opening my eyes up to a whole new world uh and the world is definitely moving it's it's changing every day uh what i'd like to do is just give you a moment before we close out to actually talk about the, your products, because you started to get into this, the products and or services that you offer. If you can take about five minutes uh, or so just to kind of tell us on that. And then we have to have you back, brother. Okay, yeah. And, 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 and before you do that, would you tell us also the motivation for the name Lion Order Gold? Well, that right there is going to have to be on the next show for Patrick. Okay, you know okay. Saying? All right. I, was, I was brought on as the technical guy. <laughs> uh, okay. So I know, I know how to stay in my lane and play my role. Uh, right on, right on. Okay. So um, I'll leave that to him. But anyhow, uh, so what we offer basically is a um, 2.25 troy ounce uh, silver piece or gold piece. You know, they have two different prices. Um, I think uh, the last time I checked, we was uh, one. the gold piece was two and a half ETH. And uh, I forget what the other one was, the silver piece was, you know. But anyhow, uh, they are on a platform called OpenSea, where you can see uh, the account and um, you'll be able to see the digitized piece of what it actually looks like physically. You know what I'm saying? We got a nice 3D um, motion revolving image of what you would actually be paying for uh, or investing in, should I say, because, you know, the precious metals, as you do know, when uh currencies go down you know those com- precious uh, metals and other commodities they tend to rise in um demand and also price so uh that's what we're trying to do um with that is offer those pieces okay the other pieces that we have was we have art pieces that we have um we have several of them uh, minted on the blockchain a lebron um a uh, nelson mandela uh bob marley um it was one more and then it was a new piece that i got sent the other day that i gotta mint that one too but anyway uh so we also sell art pieces and what's unique about these is that they're from a uh unique artist john look gene Lozier. okay he's very unique in perspective in himself again with that I, because john, uh patrick knows gene uh, better than I do, and their relationship is a lot uh, more deep and more close than G- uh, Gene and I. So I'll let Patrick talk about that on the next show. But anyway, he is a painter, and uh, he, I would say, <laughs> I'm not gonna say fame, but he is well known as a counterfeiter in South Florida. However, he took the at first it wasn't even anything bad because he has paintings that's featured on movies in in america you know so he took the negative out of what he was doing at that particular time in his life and flipped it back to the original art paintings that he was doing in his uh in his studio actually he was doing the counterfeiting and you can go look this information up you know what i'm saying but anyway uh he was counterfeiting in his art gallery in delray beach counterfeiting and he was the largest counterfeiter in america just put it like that that's a whole nother story wow. yeah that's what i'm saying that's why i don't want to go too far into it but this is the painter that we have you know what i'm saying and i'm and, and i think the last number that was said that he counterfeited and put out in circulation like 2.3 million dollars wow so, so they deported him so he had to go back to his home country and um you know that's where he's been you know since he's he's released from prison 
and and he's just been doing these paintings doing his paintings so you know he has a backstory in himself that like i said patrick could go further much further into it i just know about from me talking to him initially you know and getting an idea because we're going to write a book i mean it's still still may come you know but they wanted me to write it but i got so much stuff going on right, right. that you know uh, it's a, that it's had to go a, it's a book down. it's a book it's a netflix series and, it's, yeah. it's a bunch of, it's a bunch it's, of stuff it really is and then yeah. you know you can see the change go from the positive to the negative and back to the positive that, again yeah. right. and the positive what he's doing with us taking these unique paintings that he has and we're digitizing them on the blockchain and in many cases they're going to be one for one or one or two so they're going to be exclusive paintings wow. that you that you'll be able to have as a nft so we had a precious metal we had a, uh the art gallery and then <laughs> Patrick is so forward thinking and he's so ambitious that we he even got a clothing line. I don't know what made him come what? up with that. Yeah, yeah. Shoes and all. I'm talking. So, you know, you could get the shoe, the physical shoe, and you had a digitized authentication uh, uh, document online on the blockchain. So, Patrick, with this company, you know, although uh, uh, I don't think it's moving as fast as he would like it to. I don't I in my opinion I think it's moving just right at the pace that it should you know what I'm saying because yeah. we right there along with each chain technology but anyway that's the longer the short wow so yeah I was that last question you asked me another question I'm gonna rambling on well what well, no no you haven't been rambling on yeah I wanted to I want to know the inspiration for the the name of your business lion order gold and we yeah. can get it we can get into that when we have you back and i hope we're going to have you back real soon. very very soon because brother let me tell you uh you have a very infectious personality uh your delivery is very engaging what you what you're presenting is just really eye-opening and i can tell you have a you have a passion and there's a deeper purpose for why you're doing this work and we have we do only just begun to scratch scratch the surface and, and um, you, you you're committed man i mean you're out there in columbia man in a I, you're I, international I, with you I'm, in, I'm international i'm international, international with yours and, I, and I, I appreciate i appreciate you noticing that too you yes know? dog i mean it, this is not just some random thing you just like you know wouldn't it be cool there's just so, a, just so you guys know, Doug said I'm really, I'm really international. With you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really international. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, you know, I'm not just yeah. talking. Yes, sir. Yeah, so he, yeah, here's, I here's appreciate you. Yes, sir, man. Because uh, uh, you just piqued my interest more, and we need to know more about what you two are doing. If you would, I, I usually try to end with some type of just closing food for thought. You kind of got into it a little bit at the top, but take 30 seconds and just give us your spiel on financial literacy as it pertains to our community. Okay. So family, what I what I'm going to tell you is, is that you have to take the initiative in order to be able to uh, make the uh, educational gains you know, um, in this particular subject area, especially if you came from a background like mine, where there were was no financial literacy talk as and you know, just as well as I do that they don't even teach it in the schools. You have some people that try to um, engage banks and outside other outside parties or third parties to come in and try to teach it, but it never really lasts. It fades away. So um, the number one thing is, is that you have to have the initiative to want to learn to be able to change your situation. The second thing is, is you're gonna to have to go out and do your own research, do DYOR. That means you go on YouTube, you ask questions from people at the bank, you ask questions from people who are maybe successful financially that you may be surrounded by or have some type of contact with, and you have to read books and read the newspaper and stay on top of the, you know, late night. And I know some of, some of you may consider the news to have uh, some falsity to it, I do. You know, but there are some things that they actually tell you that they have to tell you. They're going to put it right in your face. So, all right. All right. Know, so to, that's what I would say. You know, you have to right do on. around financial literacy. I can tell I can tell it takes more than 30 seconds for this to get out. But this it's important to know. Uh, Carlos, you've been great, man. We got to have you back. Definitely. Thanks. For, thanks for being here. To the rest of you, have a great week. And until the next time we meet, we'll see you in the black space.